especially with technology nowadays, like with the digital painting and all that, I feel like it's, it's really hard to make something unique with just materials, like physical materials, instead of using something on the computer because it's, it's just different when it's on the computer because for some reason you don't have that, like that personal, like if you look at something that has been made on the computer, it just doesn't feel like real. Christian Scott isn't really a planner. And believe it or not, planning can be really helpful for an artist, and he knows that. He is a senior at Lincoln High School, where he is working on becoming a better artist. And he comes highly recommended by his teacher, Michelle Clifford. But when he doesn't plan, which could be a problem, he still produces really cool and creative artwork. He's going to talk planning, Picasso, art as a career, and YouTube. I am Zachary Bear, and this is the LPS Podcast. Part of Christian's learning progression has been filming his canvas as he goes from an idea to concept to artwork and turning that into a time-lapse video of an art project. Here's Christian talking about his art. In terms of my artwork, I guess I don't really plan. I don't like to plan. I like to do random like different things like i said i want to do like make logos for major companies i'm probably going to business probably try and make my own company where does your artistic background come from do you feel like it's something that's just kind of creative your creative outlet or does it come from someplace else it's it really came from like just like free time because I, I mean, I don't have friends, but uh, um, YouTube, YouTube's a big, a big thing. I just watch YouTube, the tutorials are great. Um, and that's probably where I learned the most. Most of my things are like random, like I said, and I don't think, I don't, I don't think it would be any different than my style that I would do for a show than personally, because I think they just both kind of mix, so. What do you see in culture today or in history in terms of artists and artwork that inspires you or that you like to look at? Um, I like Picasso, like obviously, but uh, yeah, I don't really look at any artworks today because I feel like those artworks today still are influenced by the ones prior. So I still look at Picasso and other artists, you know, like I don't even know his name, like the guy who splatters paint everywhere. That guy's weird, but <laughs> I like his work. Right. And they're, they're ultimately just being creative. There, there's, no, um, I, there's no textbook for them to follow, right? Yeah, it's, yeah. It's just being random. Yeah. Right. So when you say Picasso, what is it? Are there, uh, lines, colors, what is it about him that, you, that sticks out to you? The thing that sticks out with the Picasso is that he started doing realistic stuff and like crazy like Renaissance and all that. And then like through his older years, he was doing simple shapes, children things. So... It's kind of those that simplistic things where he just doesn't care anymore and he just likes to do the shapes and he likes to do the simple things, but then also show something deep in those, you know, and the colors in it as well, yeah. Do you think um, it's easier to make art today? We, get, we got art apps and websites and digital and, and photos have been, I mean, is it easier or does that make it more difficult to be unique, creative? How, what, how do you take that? Definitely. It's really harder to... It's really hard to make new artworks because people would just look at it and be like, oh, that looks like that, that looks like that. Uh, especially with technology nowadays, like with the digital painting and all that, I feel like it's, it's really hard to make something unique with just materials, like physical materials, instead of using something on the computer because it's, it's just different when it's on the computer because for some reason you don't have that, like, that personal like if you look at something that has been made on the computer, it just doesn't feel like real. But if you see something in person that was made from actual physical uh, materials, then it's like, wow, that that was been that's made real, you know, yeah. in your eyes. Yeah. Uh, the video that your teacher was talking about when we, before we came out here. Yeah. Can you describe what that piece of art is and and talk about the project itself a little bit? Um. Well, to be honest, it was like. I cut some paper and I'm like, oh, let's do a video because I'm ready to do a video today. And I've done some other videos that I didn't really like. So this one was going to be a quick little doodle, see if I like it. It was actually going to be like uh, 
do I like it? Let's see if we can do this again, time-lapse video. And I did it and I started using the oil pastels. I love the oil pastels. I was using those forever. And I started to like the colors that I was using. And then as I was going, um, everything started to blend and I was adding on top, uh, adding colors on top, adding pencil on top, and it just was cohesive. And I just liked the video overall. So what would you describe? How would you describe it oh, to somebody? Describe it? Like, like I said, it's just a random, like it was a random sketch, random colors, the thought process was not there, but I was just doing it. Something that I can just do, I do it fast, and I feel like I need to get it done like right now. When you see something that you started, and you get to a certain point, you're like, nah, this isn't, this isn't good. What are those two, three, four things that make it not good in your mind? Um, hmm. um I would say something that doesn't make it good. Uh, the colors, the color choice, um, the measurement, if I mess up, like if the eye's too big, if the eye's too small, um, and I would say the overall, like, feel to it, like, if no one can, like, uh, match up to it, or, you know, like, if, if no one can, uh, see it like I can see it, then it's not worth, like, showing if, uh, let's say, if it has a tone that no one likes. Besides me, I don't think I don't think it's good. I mean, if if I don't like it, then I don't think anybody else would like it. Um, sometimes art will get a bad rap at the high school level or college level because people want to know well, what are you going to do. I mean, you got to be a famous artist or you're going to mm -hmm. be a starving artist. Mm -hmm. You seem to have a little different plan, uh, maybe more realistic going into business, understanding that concept. Um, is that something you you chose because of your interest in the business side, or are you looking at it from more of a realistic? What, what can I do with my art talent that will, you know, make me a good living? I would say both business, or I'm just like realistic, and I like business because money, obviously. And um, the realistic side, like you said, like starving, starving, starving artists. I mean, yeah, I want to be an artist when I grow up. I, I will continue doing art, but it's just the fact that it's not realistic unless you are a big artist. And I feel like... I, I do like business, I do like math, I do like getting into the business field, but it's also that like that uh, stereotype where it's like you're going to be sitting in a desk all day and not doing anything creative. On my side, I feel like I can incorporate the business and the realistic and incorporate my art. So. Talk a bit about uh, independent study that you're taking with your teacher, Michelle Clifford, and what does that allow you to do? Um, is it teacher assistant? Is it uh, more creative time for you? Talk about what an independent study means for you. Um, well, independent study, I mean, I go in the class and I get to start whatever I want. That's what I love about it. Um, and there is structure too, because she wants me to plan something out, which I'm really bad at doing. Like I said, like I love doing random, spontaneous things, but she does want me to plan it out because it's more realistic in the future to have to do it, especially if I ever get commissions. And um, I don't know, she she makes me um, uh, kind of incorporate what they're doing in what she wants me to do, or what, she wants me to incorporate what um, they're doing in class to what I'm like f doing freely. Um, she, independent study is, I would say it's kind of easier than doing what they're doing in class because you get to do what you want, you get to use the materials you want, um, but you are open to what, do what you want to do. But she does she does want me to do like different types of things. Because I'm guessing that for an artist at your level, you want to get better at what you're good at, yeah. but you also want to get good yeah, at yeah. what you're not very good at. So do, do you ever do something that is unorthodox yeah, just so that you can get better at it, even though you know it, it may not be for show, it may not be perfect, but there's certain parts of this I need to get better at. Ears. Is that fair? Ears, yeah. She made me do ears, and I hate ears. I hate doing ears. And what's the hard part about ears? The the overall just shape of the ears, I can't do it. I can't do it. <laughs> she, I'm awful at ears, and she actually helped me a lot. Um, in the time last video, like you could see me doing ears, and they, they do look decent. But it was mainly her help with the shape that she taught me how to do it. And 
I don't know. I'm thankful for that, obviously, because I was never able to do yours. Is there another facial uh, part that you struggled with but have gotten better at? In, uh, when I was in independent study? Uh, anytime, as an artist at any point. I would say the nose. She also taught me how to do the nose, like the little shine on the nose that people do on the drawings and stuff. Yeah, she taught me how to do the shine on the nose to make it pop out and... I'm grateful for that too. Well, you know, there's a reason that people like to do stick figures, oh, so yeah. they don't have to get into the details. Mm -hmm. So you're talking about upper one percent stuff here when it comes to someone actually doing it mm -hmm. and and making it look realistic. So there's some. Is there uh, um, a part of you that maybe in elementary, middle school that thought this class, an art class, is something that's kind of is where I belong, is where I fit in, or when did it really take shape? Um, it actually never did, like, until I would say seventh grade when, I mean, I wasn't the popular kid. I mean, I would just go home and watch YouTube after school every day, just doing tutorials on the videos and all that. Um, I would say art class was always the easiest because all the other subjects were really kind of hard for me, but I never felt like art was a, like a, a talent you're born with. I feel like, cause I mean... I knew friends that were like way better artists than I was and they just never continued with it. And now they do stick figures and I try and do the most I can with artwork. All right. So you go home today, you got an empty studio. Is it a paintbrush? Is it a pencil? Uh, is it something else? What, what is it that you just, this is, this is my most natural art form. Um, I would say the pencil is what I pick up the most and is what I pick up first. Uh, and um, I don't know if I like the sketch I'm doing or if I'm getting the flow then I would just pick up a canvas do a doodle paint it yeah. that was Christian Scott an artist a cool interview and a senior at Lincoln High School I'm Zachary Bear and this is the LPS podcast thanks for listening <laughs>